Hey everybody, it's been a month and I have a big laundry list of things to tell you about, uh, only three of which are excuses for why I was gone. Most of them are exciting things and updates for what's going to come in the future because Funnily enough, I wasn't dead this whole time, I was actually doing stuff. The first big thing is I got a job. For the first part of this month, I was working full-time. I dropped my schedule about a couple weeks ago to focus on college applications because I will be moving into college next semester because I missed the deadline for this semester. So I will be going back to work soon, but as of right now, I'm not currently working. Uh, that's why the front half of this month was <laughs> completely dry that's because well i was working there was no time to make videos which kind of sucks i really like doing this the second thing was of course college i had the uh first semester deadline coming very very close and i was very very pressured to do it on my own which was very very not fun and i did not do well under pressure so i missed the deadline completely but it's totally fine i'm situated for next semester so it's not to worry and the third one i got sick not coronavirus sick, it was allergies. I always get allergies in the fall, uh, right around when school starts for the first time. They get fucking awful. I'm sick for so long, for so bad, and it's always sinus stuff, so as you can tell, my voice may be a little bit sick. It was awful yesterday. My voice was completely raspy. I had a, a thing in my throat. I couldn't speak because it was extremely painful, and my sinuses and passages have been clogged, as well as my ears. It's not fun. I don't want to talk about it. It was a terrible experience. I'm still a little bit sick. I'm not fully out of it, of course, but I'm on the path to wellness. When I graduated high school and summer started and I no longer had fall and a fall semester of school to look forward to, uh, I figured that sitting at home playing games all day, I just felt super unproductive and fucking useless and it was a terrible feeling. I don't want to do that anymore, so I'm not making the shitty gaming videos anymore. I've moved completely, for the most part, away from Dead by Daylight. Not because I don't like it, I just, right now, video games is, I mean, for the most part, video games is just not what I want to do. It feels very unproductive, uh, and I want to make actually good things, and I want to I want to make art and, and videos and scripts and whatnot. Those three pillars are kind of what I want to focus on going forward with my life, basically. Uh, those are the things that really just make my, my brain active and, and make me feel useful. Speaking of that one exception, I did the fucking stupidest thing, and it's so irrelevant to what's happening, but I need to explain it. Um... So I've been playing with my friends for a while on Discord and whatnot, we, we jump around from game to game, uh, it's kind of like that, and we, for the memes, just hopped into Fortnite, because why not, it's a free game, it's, it's fun, one of my friends plays it a lot and he's really good at the game, uh, so we figured hop into it, it'll be fun, we did have fun, Fortnite is a very fun game, it's a very popular game, and I'm not making Fortnite videos, god, it's so fucking awful. <sighs> but my stupid ape brain saw the battle pass and saw, hey, that's Rick from Rick and Morty. I think it'd be funny to play as that guy. So, five days before this battle pass ended, I thought, I'm gonna buy the battle pass, and I if I grind, I can probably get Rick. I've spent so much fucking time trying to get Rick before the battle pass ends, and I'm literally never going to touch the game again, but I have to do it because I already blew the fucking $8. For videos, I have really big stuff planned. I have the Ocarina of Time video essay, the second part, the adult portion, way in the future. Don't even think that it's coming out anytime soon because I have not been working on it. I have so much stuff in the oven right now. That's the last thing I want to work on because it is the biggest thing. I have several very big Doctor Who ranking videos and also other ranking videos for stuff that I've been interested in. The big one is ranking all the Doctor Who finales. I'm not doing a tier list for it. I'm doing a scripted, edited, and VO'd video ranking and talking in depth about all the finales in Doctor Who. I think it's going to be fucking awesome when it's finished. I'm really, really taking my time with that one because with ranking videos, I want it to stand on its own. I want to really flex my my film muscles and dig into the narratives and the shots and the acting and everything. Those are things that are important to me, so I want to take my time with that. I'm still writing it right now, but it's going to be about 40 minutes long. So, when, it, when you finally get it, you'll have plenty of video to sink your teeth into, which is kind of what I want. I want to do big uh, videos that tie people over for a while. That's what I like doing. In that same vein, I'm also doing a video ranking all of the Half-Life chapters. Uh, if you've played Half-Life, stupidly good game. Uh, if, I know it's a niche one. You guys probably don't know Half-Life, but God, it's such a good game. Listen, I'm the guy that likes Doctor Who. It, it, it had to appeal to someone at some point for some reason. I tried Half-Life on a whim like a year ago. I fucking fell in love with it instantly. It's such a good game. It's so dirt cheap. Play it. If you're bored, if you have time, 
play it. It's such a good campaign. And I'm going to be ranking the chapters in that, in the same vein as the Doctor Who video essay. That'll come later, but um, it's a, it's something I'm also pretty passionate about. And the Doctor Who tribute videos, that's a big thing that I want to do. So, if you're unaware, there is a YouTube content creator. He goes by the name of the Garrow Studios. I found his content back in 2017. Huge unending inspiration. He's such a goddamn artist. I love what he does. I found him through Doctor Who videos and his Doctor Who tribute videos and montages. Some of the best on the planet. Some of my favorite videos on the on the platform are his stuff. And moving forward through my adolescence, through my high school years, I grew up with his stuff. His videos really, really, really just filled me with passion and love for film and Doctor Who. And uh, really, uh, kept me tied over with Doctor Who when the show wasn't giving it to me during the Jodie Whittaker uh, seasons. So I want to fill that void, that Doctor Who tribute video void that he left when he, you know, abandoned uh, Doctor Who to pursue his own favorite things. And I give him total props for that. He's doing amazing stuff. I still watch his videos. Um, so I want to do Doctor Who tribute videos. I really want to make them like his, but in, in my own way, of course. I'm not stealing his shit. I'm using my own music. I'm cutting it my own way, trying to make my own stuff. Uh, he is a huge inspiration, of course. Please check out his stuff. It is some of the best stuff on YouTube. I'll link it down below. So I'm going to make stuff like that. I, The reason it took so long to make this tribute video in specific is I had to download every single Doctor Who video essay <laughs> to my HDD, my hard drive. Uh, I picked up these through Amazon. This is a DVD set of all the episodes. Chris Eccleston and David Tennant, Matt Smith, and my boy Peter C. That's all the episodes right there. Minus bonus features, which sucks. Uh, so that's a DVD set of all the episodes. Uh, 60 bucks, really affordable for what I wanted. Uh, so I picked those up, and now I have all the episodes on my HDD ready to edit and do those videos. So I'm, I'm planning on doing those moving forward. They are really, really bite-sized videos, but they're I'm, I'm so super, super duper proud of them. And I am assuming I'm going to be proud of them as I make them, because they're really bite-sized projects that are really easy to just kind of jump into and uh, make really tight, and I like doing stuff like that. I enjoy doing that in that Doctor Who video essay, but I'm really getting to dig into that with these, so that's gonna be fun. Uh, the reason they're not in HD is because when I buy the Blu-ray, or, you know, HD, uh, in terms of Blu-ray, uh, when I get the Blu-ray sets, I want them to be the Steelbooks, because I'm collecting the Doctor Who Steelbooks. The reason I don't have the full set is, God, they get so damn expensive, but I have Series 5, Series 7, I pre-ordered this one when it dropped. So I was lucky to get that in time. Series 4, Series 6, and Series 10. And if that wasn't bad enough, most of them are region coded. And I do not have a region free Blu ray player because they get pretty expensive. So uh, the only one that I can actually uh, use is the Series 10 one, uh, which sucks, but that's okay. So when I finally get around to getting all the steelbooks, and they get so expensive and so fucking rare, it's going to take forever. In the meantime, I'm using the DVD ones, and that works pretty well. There, it's it just kind of works a bit better because most of the older episodes, Chris Eccleston and David Tennant, are not shot in HD, so uh, it kind of just smooths out. It's not the best quality. I, I wish I could do more, but it, they get expensive. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to waste money on an actual Blu-ray set when I can get the steelbooks. Also, on the recreational side, I finished my first draft of Rapid Evolution about a week ago. Uh, I will link it down below if you're interested. That is my Doctor Who story, a follow-up to The Waters of Mars. Uh, I think it's it mostly is exactly what I wanted. Of course, it's the first draft, uh, but the ending, specifically most of the ending stuff and the final, you know, what I hyped up earlier about, um, you know, getting the Doctor to kill the antagonist of the story, and then to get into a kill the moon style argument with his companion, and then accidentally kill her. In writing that, I think I'm pretty happy with that. That's exactly what I wanted. I may even just kind of put that segment on the channel because as it's written, I think it's fucking perfect. Uh, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. It'll probably go through some changes, of course. I'm not, not perfect. But if you are curious, specifically about the ending part and what I explored with Time World Victorious in that story, you can find it down below. I recommend it, obviously, because it took a while to write. Other than that, video essays are being produced. The ranking videos are being produced. A lot of things are being produced. So seriously, don't wait around. I'm still here. Do not wait around. Don't wait around. I have a lot on my plate, but I want to make good things. So, when you get it, it'll be great. I promise. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for still sticking around with me. Thank you for enjoying the Doctor Who video essay if you did come from that. I still read the comments on that video. It's still getting views and picking up traction. Super insanely happy. Actually, a while back, it was the fifth, sixth, or maybe seventh most relevant search for Doctor Who video essay. If you type in Doctor Who video essay on YouTube, it's one of the first ones that came up for a while. I think it still is. Uh, that's 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 crazy. I'm I'm overjoyed, honestly. Uh, it's 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 a real privilege, and I'm I'm happy that people are so happy with it. I still I look back on it now, and I see a lot of uh, ignorance and pretentiousness from me. I was, you know, just I had my own voice for Doctor Who and what I wanted to say, and particularly with the Chibnall portion of that chapter. That's a chapter that I I skip almost every time I watch that video. I just think it's super. Uh, big-headed of me to to just insult Chris Ch Chibnall when he's written amazing stuff that I've never seen before. It was extremely immature of me, uh, and I'm I'm honestly surprised people even tolerate that section of the video and still love it despite that egregious uh, misrepresentation of Chris, Ch Chris Chibnall's writing is. Even though I maintain the Whitaker seasons are fucking awful, but Chris Chibnall is not a incompetent buffoon. Anyways, thank you for listening to my rambling. It's been a joy. Hope you're enjoying the Doctor Who tribute video I uploaded. Uh, probably a little bit earlier today. Uh, that one has been in the oven for about two weeks. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a five-minute video. It was in the oven for two weeks, but I'm very happy with it. I hope it evokes the Gare Studios-esque quality, because, you know, I did wait around for it to be there. So thank you, and uh, more stuff's coming. Bye-bye.